th there is clearly a uh, problem, many problems, myriad of which have been have been caused by tone deaf owners, um, a tone deaf commissioner. You know, God bless Roger Goodell for getting an extension. Uh, he's made the owners money, but I, I believe long term they've helped kill a golden goose. And in, and, and in, in myriad ways, including the domestic violence issue, which they approached very slowly and, and not responsibly at all. They also, the concussion issue, which they had hid from players for years, they finally begun to address and they realized that shoot, you don't need to play tackle football at seven and eight to have a decent NFL career. I think you you see it in these. Um, it, you talk to mothers. Doesn't matter if it's the inner city. Doesn't matter if it's the suburbs. There are parents who won't let their kids play tackle football. The talent pool is going to dry up at some point, and then there's just an oversaturation of the product. Com you, you contrast mm -hmm. that with the NBA, and the NBA just feels like it, it's it's got so much star power right now. This is as popular as I can remember the NBA uh, since it's been since Michael Jordan retired for the second time. Yeah, and you think about the internet, and I'm sure Tillman, I want you to jump in here. One of the things that uh, uh, both um, uh, David Stern and Mr. Silver have done, Adam Silver, the current current commissioner, they have emphasized internationalization of basketball and the NBA product. That is a real differentiator from the NFL. Even though the NFL's gone and tried to stage games in, and, and successfully stage games in Mexico City and London, it's not the same. American football is not the game internationally basketball is. Mike. No, I, I'm, I'm in complete agreement. I'm, I'm in complete agreement that, that at one point there was a time when, uh, when, when David Stern spent all his time, the former NBA commissioner, putting it into international development. Uh, you see from Palestine to Israel to China, there are people wearing um, jerseys of Stephen Curry and, and James Harden and, and everyone else in between. And so, so, so you think about what the NBA has become. And, and, and how it's become a global product and how, frankly, it's much easier to play than football internationally. Um, I, you know, I, it's, the, it's the second most popular sport in the world next to, uh, next to football, soccer. So, um, so I, you know, it's, it's, a def, it's a definite swing. I don't know if NBA is going to eclipse the NFL in the next three years, but in 10 years, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll stake my job on it. Talk the NFL will not be as popular as the NBA in 10 years. That is a big claim. Uh, you must be well, happy to hear I'm that. Not really I'm happy, happy, to, hear happy that. to hear that. <laughs> but tie this together. Uh, you know, the internationalization of the game, uh, the, uh, the excitement of the game, the star power. And the, the visibility of the stars has a lot to do with it. I agree. You can stop people on the street and say, yeah. name me big, five big NFL stars and five big... NBA stars, and it's easier to name the NBA stars. And part of it is, is because people know what they look like. They can see they, them. They can see them, and 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 they, they're they're just more visible out there, and and they seem to get a lot more attention. It's it's, uh, and the NBA doesn't seem to have a lot of issues, and and it's a younger audience, and everything is younger today. Everything yeah, we gonna, do in the rest of the business is younger. For, uh, I was going to jump in, Tillman, and say one of the great things about the progressiveness of NBA owners is their acceptance that it's okay for their athletes to speak out and reflect their opinions, irrespective of how people feel about them. Um, and, and there's an openness and a willingness to understand that you, you do have a life beyond the court and, and not necessarily everybody has to agree um, on things when they walk into the locker room together, except for being a team on the court. And I think that Adam Silver and you yourself, sir, uh, exemplify that in, in ways that the NFL could really learn from, frankly. I, I think there's also, and we're sort of talking about the same thing here, Mike and Tillman, and that is the way the NBA has created and built around stars in a way that yeah. it's harder for the NFL to do it. And I would yeah. point to this. When you look at some of the great stars in the NFL, they are older. Roethlisberger, Brady, Breeze. Uh, Carson Palmer, some of the gr big players there are getting older, and the NBA is bringing on the Joel Embiid's, uh, the the uh, Carl Anthony Towns, the Kyrie Irvings, and they've got brands in apparel and so forth that a lot of the NFL guys haven't had. And it seems to be 
more of a team sport. You don't have the wide receivers that are trying to be independent and complaining about not getting the ball <laughs> as much. Right. It just seems to right now be a little more friendlier. But I, I don't know that the NBA yeah. teams are ever going to be worth more than the NFL teams. The NFL is an unbelievable product. Uh, I would own an NFL team tomorrow if I could, okay? <laughs> uh, I wouldn't give up my NBA team, though. But, we, but we, uh, I mean, it's, it, they're both just great sports. Hey there, thanks for checking out CNBC on YouTube. Be sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of the day's biggest stories. You can also click on any of the videos around me to watch the latest from CNBC. Thanks for watching.